So as Martin mentioned, the presentation I'm going to present to you today is about structural optimization of the gearbox housing. And this is predominantly looking at how we can actually reduce the gear mesh misalignment uh, in order to improve the performance of the gears in terms of durability, but also in terms of noise. Um, in terms of the agenda for the presentation, I'll give you a brief introduction to the Edison project, um, and then I'll briefly explain the industry challenges as been explained this morning, and how we could address some of those challenges via the workflow that we developed uh, during in the, the Edison projects. And for those who are not familiar with transmission design, uh, I will run through a generic uh, tr transmission design approach and how we can incorporate the gearbox housing uh, optimization into the process in order to have a better performance of the gears. I will demonstrate the, the benefits from this workflow through a very simple case study, and then provide you with a summary and conclusion at the end. Uh, in terms of the Edison project, um, in 2018, uh, Romex put together a consortium to, to run this research and development project. We, are, we were basically the, the lead for the project and we were responsible for the design development of the electric machine, both the transmission and also in terms of the assessment of the performance of the whole thing. Shagwe Land Rover provided the, uh, the benchmark, the design specification and targets and requirements in terms of vehicle specifications, the source systems, uh, provide the, the expertise in terms of the simulation of the electrical machine, where we get the, the air gap flux forces in order to assess the noise performance of the electrical machine. GRM Consulting provide the expertise in terms of optimization of the structural optimization. And we have NPL, who provided some material testing, so the magnets or other materials that we use within the design of the electrical machine. And then you have University of Sheffield, who provide expertise of the electrical machine design, but also provided the, the test facilities where we actually test the, uh, the, the ATM machine in their test facility. The, the aim of the project was to develop um, a non-rare earth ferrite magnet um, motor technology in a vehicle uh, application. Uh, as part of that, we also developed le electromedical analysis um, tool set and workflows in order to be able to effectively optimize the system for uh, performance. In terms of industry challenges, obviously the move to electrification in the automotive industry brings the need for innovation and e-power train. The industry is seeing more and more pressure to produce products that are more sustainable. This is in terms of costs, but also in terms of lightweight and also robustness. Unfortunately, lightweight structures are inherently more flexible and it introduces additional challenges when you try to optimize the system for um, durability, but also in terms of noise. The deflection of the complete system leads to the misalignment of the internal components of the transmission. And this could result in, and could compromise the performance of the gears, but also the bearings or any other component within the system. Such misalignment, for example, in the gear mesh can be corrected by applying some sort of modification on the gear flank itself. And this sometimes um, provide a satisfactory gear performance. Unfortunately, when the misalignment is very high, which you would expect from very flexible structure, lightweight structures, then the correction by microgeometry itself will not be sufficient. This is where I explain later on in the example study. So an approach that uses structural optimization in conjunction with CAE-led design process should be considered and will provide advantages to the gear design itself. Going to a very basic transmission design approach, this is very generic and very simplified. Obviously, when you start the design, you will have design specification or requirements, and you take these requirements and you start to size the internal components. And this could be the gears, bearing, shafts, or spine, whatever internal components that you have within the system. Once you have that internal component that you size, you then start to design the gearbox housing. And the gearbox housing obviously has a number of functions, predominantly to provide sufficient structural strength, uh, provide interface to the rest of the vehicle, to the chassis by the different mount systems, that you have uh, in the system. And also to, provide, to prevent dirt from getting into the transmission itself because that could compromise the life of the bearings and the gears. And obviously these gears and bearings, they need to be lubricated and so you need to contain the lubricant. And to some degree, you would try to reduce the radiated noise coming from the gears, but this is not probably the main functions of it. 
because you, the noise coming from the gears is minimal compared to the vibration that you get from the gearbox housing. And then also to maintain adequate alignment of the components, mainly the bearings where you have some degree of misalignment that is acceptable depending on what bearing type you're using within the transmission system. So once you have the gearbox housing, then you put it, the whole thing system together, the internal components and the gearbox housing, the, the brackets, the mounting, and you assess the system under, under loads and see how it performs under these huge deflections. So when the system deflects, obviously the shaft will deflect, the bearing itself will deflect because it has clearance and stiffness in it itself, and then the housing will deflect itself. When the whole thing com combined and you get all this flexion, what happens is you, get, you start to get misalignment in the gear mesh. So instead of having the gears which are perfectly parallel, they are misaligned. And because of the misalignment in the gears, the, the loading on the gears starts to deviate towards the edge of the tooth. And because of the deviation, the way it starts to move towards the edge of the tooth, obviously the stress increases, and then you start to reduce the life of the gears, but also you start to in most cases, you get noise problem coming from the gears itself. And generally what you see in terms of failure is like gear micro pitting, where you start to see pits uh, on the gear flanks over time, because this is more like a fatigue failure that you introduce to the system. So what do people do when they have the misalignment? This is where they start to apply gear micro geometry corrections on the flank of the tooth. Unfortunately, this process is done at very later stage in the design process where generally the designs generally mostly fix and to make any changes would be more difficult at this point of time. So they apply this macro geometry probably to reduce the contact stress so you can actually realign the gears, but also to reduce what we call transmission error. This is TE, which is basically the source of the gear wind noise that you hear within the vehicle. So when you hear a very whiny noise, uh, it could be either be from the gears, it could also be from the electric machine, but the example that we're doing here is coming from the gears itself, and it's called transmission error. So you can apply various micro-geometry corrections on the flank. There are two examples that I've given here. One is lead slope corrections. So basically what you do is you grind more in one end of the tooth, so you can actually align the gears back to its normal position. The other corrections that you can apply is lead crowning. So it's more like a barreling shape that you apply across the face width. You can also apply barreling across the profile side, but in terms of to correct the misalignment, you generally apply lead slope corrections or this crowning. So just a crude example here, you've got the pinion mesh and then you've got the wheel. And because of the misalignment, you get a gap at one end of the tooth. And because of that gap, the, you get loading on one edge compared to the other. So what you do then, you apply the lead correction. So from having a misaligned gears, you introduce it to be more parallel to one another again. And you also introduce crowning. The reason for crowning is to try to reduce the sensitivity of the gears to misalignment itself. Because you have to bear in mind, when you run the vehicle, it's not running at a single torque value, but it's going from zero to whatever max torque you apply. So the misalignment actually varies with time, and therefore, you can't get rid of the misalignment because it's always going to be there, but the question is how you can, you can control the distribution of the misalignment across the operating range. So you can do that when the misalignment is relatively low because you can apply very small corrections to the gear flanks. So the correction that we're thinking about here is in terms of microns, so it's like 20 microns, 30 microns. But when the misalignment is very high, then this is where you need to apply a larger corrections on the gears. That is good if you're thinking about, I need to correct the gears at the max store level when you have the maximum misalignment. So you introduce a lead corrections to correct that least, uh, misalignment, but obviously at lower torque when you have less misalignment, then the lead correction that you apply is a bit excessive to what is required. And this is where you get suboptimal performance in the gears because you try to optimize it for high loading conditions, but you compromise the medium to lower torque conditions. Apart from the performance of the gears, when you start to apply excessive gear mark geometry correction on the flank, you start to add complexity to the measuring cells. So what you end up with is a gear profile that deviates from the design intent. So as an example here, you have some 
CMM measurements of the gear profile itself. So you got the profile measurement at the top, and then you got the lead measurement at the bottom. And you can see the design intent that they apply a lead stop corrections because everything's leaning to one end. You can also see the crowning that they apply across the face width, but unfortunately, because of the large crowning that they try to apply, you can see that the crowning itself deviates to one end. So this is not the design intent, but unfortunately, it's coming from the manufacturing itself. When you start to increase the crowning, you also start to induce what we call biasing of twists. So there's a diagram on the left there. So you get a twisting uh, of the flank profile purely because you try to apply this crowning during the manufacturing process. You can try to remove this flank or biasing, but unfortunately that comes with extra time and cost and money. So what do we do then? So the idea is that you introduce a structural optimization of the gearbox housing up front very early in the design phase so they can actually reduce the misalignment to give the opportunity to the gear designers to come up with a design that is robust across all the operating points. So in terms of the workflow, um, the core simulations between so Romex Enduro and GRM optimizer. Romex Enduro is a software from uh, Hexagon that we generally use or customers generally use to assess the performance of the system drive line in terms of durability. And we core simulation this with the GRM simulations. So the process starts by taking a minimum thickness housing as the benchmark. And from this minimum thickness, you assess the current topology stiffness of the housing itself. And we take that stiffness into Romex Enduro and we run a design experiment study in order to find a relationship between the housing stiffness and also the gear mesh misalignment uh, within, the, within the gearbox. So in terms of design experiment, what we do is we vary the displacement on the outer bearing outer race and also calculate what the misalignment at the gear mesh is within the system. And we take this matrix or the, this DOE gradient back into the optimizer, uh, which then run the optimization in order to reduce the misalignment that you see within the gear mesh. Every now and then, it will stop or pause the optimization and reassess the topology stiffness metric and create a different benchmark for the housing, and then it loops again until it comes to a final solutions. So in terms of the case study, um, what I'm going to present here is a very simplified electric drive unit. It's basically a two-stage single-speed gearbox with a ratio around 9.1. So what we do is we develop this gearbox. Uh, it incorporates the electric machine, as you can see there, with the two ratio gears. Obviously, the, house, uh, the system is enclosed within the gearbox housing and also the housing enclosing the electrical machine itself. We assess the design at two different load cases in max torque, in drive condition, but also uh, max torque in coasting conditions. The objective of the analysis, obviously, to reduce the gear mesh misalignment variation across all the operating points in order to have a low stress conditions, low noise, but also improve in terms of efficiency. Um, in terms of the approach, we optimize the EDU housing, and then we try to reduce the mass at the same time, while maintaining uh, the stresses with, uh, within the, the year limit of the materials. So in terms of design approach, um, the top line there you can see is the traditional design approach, where you start to design the internal components, you design the housing with some sort of optimization or refinement of the housing design in order to reduce oil remove any uh, stress hotspots with the housing. Once you have the housing, as I mentioned, you design the micro geometry corrections on the gear flanks, and then you reassess the performance of the gears. And in this example, I'm just gonna call that baseline model one. And then in terms of the structural optimization approach, you have the reduced housing model, where you reduce the, the simplify the housing itself to remove all the rips, and then we have a minimum thickness for the housing of about around 3.5 millimeters itself. And you perform the same similar analysis just for the sake of it to see how 
that minimum mass model as you compare against the traditional design approach baseline model. And then what we do is we take that minimum mass model of the housing itself and we run the optimization in order to reduce the gear mesh misalignment and then we start to perform the microgeometry corrections again and see how they compare in terms of performance against the, the baseline model that we, we uh, analyzed before. So in terms of the co-simulation results, um, you can see here the, the organic structure that came out from the optimization, which is colored in red. And then what we had to do was to interpret the topology of this organic structure by introducing ribbing to mimic the stiffness of those particular sections in the gearbox housing. And these are colored uh, in blue. And all this work was done by, by Carl itself. Uh, and thank you, Carl, for, for the effort on this. So once you get the optimizations complete, then you can start to do comparisons between the different design. The first thing obviously you want to look at is the comparison in terms of gear mesh misalignment. The graphs that you see on the right and left are basically the gear mesh misalignment for the two gear pairs. The one on this side is basically the input gear set, and then on the left is the output gear set. Everything in blue is basically the, the baseline model where we design the housing using the traditional approach. Everything highlighted in orange is obviously the minimum mass model. And then everything in green, uh, the, um, the, the optimized model itself. What you're seeing here is four different conditions. The two values on the left, my left, are basically the drive conditions at 50 and 160 newton meter torque conditions at the input side. And then the two on my right is basically the coasting conditions. And these obviously operate on the different flanks of the gears as it change directions. What you can see here is the large misalignment um, for the minimum mass model, which is over 50 microns. You might think this is small, but in terms of performance of the gears, in terms of durability and noise, this is quite significant misalignment in the gear mesh. What generally you would see is people then try to correct the misalignment by the micro-geometry. They try their best, but unfortunately it is where they face the challenge to, to have a really good design. What you can assess in terms of noise as well is transmission error, which is the source of the gear wide noise problem. So generally, you would try to aim a transmission error of peak to peak probably below one micron or even less with electric, electric drive units. What you can see here is a very large transmission error, as you would expect from a minimum mass model because of the high misalignment, especially in the low and medium torque range. What you can see surprisingly is the minimum mass model in terms of TE compares really well with the traditional approach and also the optimized model. But unfortunately, at the same point, you compromise performance in terms of noise at the low and medium torque range. And the reason for this can be explained on the next slide. So this results basically show you the different three different models. You have the baseline design on the left, the minimum mass model in the, the middle, and then the optimized design on the far left. What you present here is the contact stress distribution on the flank itself. So this is like the mating gears and see how the contact stress perform at three different torque level. You have the 50 meter input torque, 110 input torque value, and the max torque of 160 nm. Where well, you can see obviously, as you increase the load, the contact distribution start to spread across the gear flank. But what you will see, C, especially for the minimum mass model, that contact point or contact distribution start to shift from one end to the other end of the gears as the misalignment increases with load. If you compare the baseline and optimize in terms of leak slope correction, you can get away with 20 micron leak slope correction. But because of the high misalignment in the minimum mass model, then you require 45 micron leak corrections. So which is small, but it's quite excessive uh, misalignment corrections. Unfortunately, because of that, you would have a, a centered contact at max torque because you apply these large corrections or leak corrections. But unfortunately, you compromise the contact distribution at the low torque because the leak slope correction they apply is too much 
for the low and medium torque. And hence, that resulted in the high transmission error and probably noise problem at the low and medium torque condition. So what you need to do is try to aim for a low misalignment and give the better chance for your gear designers to improve the contact distribution in terms of durability and noise. So to, to conclude and summarize, um, we've demonstrated through the Edison project, a uh, multi-attribute structural optimization approach to allow you to optimize a lightweight housing design without compromising the gear performance. Um, the process make it easier for you, for the gear designers to achieve favorable contact thrust distribution and also low TE for noise um, without applying excessive large micro geometry corrections that is bad for in terms of manufacturing, but also robustness of design across the multiple operating points. So what you try to do here is use the micro geometry corrections to refine the design and not to correct a really bad design from, from the initial phase. So the approach enables designers to consider characteristics, which otherwise would be too complex, you would do blindly. So try to relate bearing displacement and housing stiffness to uh, gear mesh assignment. It would be quite a challenge if you try to do it manually, but with the help of GRM, we'd be able to, to do this workflow seamlessly and within um, a short time. So the idea is to consider this workflow at the very early design stage in order to um, simplify the process and design the detailed design phase to have a better performance transmission. And with that, I end my presentation. <laughs>